I, I'm pretty sure that this is an editorial betting pool. How shitty of a writer can we stick on our flagship titles? This is the reason why Uncanny X-Men has Gail Simone. This is going to be worse than Zeb Wells. Zeb Wells was the most no-name, no-talent writer to ever get onto ASM in my memory. A lot of people have been very upset with Marvel Comics and their treatment of Spider-Man. We've seen the enormous success of Ultimate Spider-Man, Peter Parker, Mary Jane together, married with kids. Of course, they took that away with one more day. They promised they'd never give it back. And now we have Tom Brevoort once again confirming you can't have Peter Parker and MJ together as married couple. Because Joe Casada had a divorce 20 years ago. We can't have Mary Jane and Peter together, even though it's a man that no longer works for the company. You know, every time Tom Brevert opens his mouth, it's like him just giving a giant fuck you to anyone that's given him a career for the past 30 years. I almost feel like he blames us for him still being in comics. At the most recent Baltimore Comic Con, Tom Brevoort discussed character mandates in place at Marvel Comics and how they affect Spider-Man and his most enduring love interest. Quote, if you're working with Marvel, the ground rules are the characters are Marvels, and Marvel as an institution gets to decide what's right and wrong for these characters. So there are certain things you don't want Spider-Man to do. He can get back with Mary Jane. He just can't actually tie the knot with Mary Jane. That's an actual mandate. It cannot happen. That's just confirmation for all of you still lingering Amazing Spider-Man readers like I was for many, many years, that they're not going to give it to us. That is their corporate mandate. They have made a determination, at least according to their senior vice president, that thing we want, we're never going to get. It is a corporate mandate. It is not an editorial mandate. It is not a just creative decision by the current regime over at that company. It is the corporate mandate, which means it's coming down from above. It's coming down from either Disney or Kevin Feige, who is, I guess, the overall head of Marvel these days, or Dan Buckley, who I think is still, is he the publisher or the president? He's the president, and, and Feige is the chief creative officer. Okay, so either Feige, Buckley, or Disney has made the decision, we are never getting that again. Stop buying Amazing Spider-Man. I don't understand the idea that you would have a corporate mandate to put in place something that has been so divisive for readers, and there is ample evidence out there now that we have an Ultimate Spider-Man, which isn't a great comic book, it's kind of boring, but it is giving you one aspect of Peter Parker that you've always wanted, and it's very, very popular in large part because of that. They're leaving money on the table because the thing people want is happening, but it's not happening in continuity, so it doesn't really matter. The 616 is the only universe that matters. Everything else is gravy. Everything else is a side dish. It's dessert. It's whatever you want to call it. But the 616 is the main course. I understand the idea that there are certain ground rules with characters. Superman should still be from Krypton. Wonder Woman should still be from Themyscira. Spider-Man should still have been bitten by a radioactive spider. Daredevil should still be blind. Understanding those basic kind of core functions, that's one thing. This is a very, very specific, we are not going to do this creative decision that they've decided to mandate from the corporate level, which seems really, really asinine. What most of us Spider-Man readers have been doing for the past 20 years is holding on to hope. We've stuck around in the hopes that they give us the thing that they took away back. Now it's almost 20 years later. And now you're telling us, nah, fuck you. You're just not getting it. Peter Parker, Spider-Man, while still very, very popular and still one of their top selling characters and certainly a flagship title in Amazing Spider-Man, is a bit stagnant. They're having to go back and retread the exact same things that they were doing with the character like 40 years ago. He's going back to college. He's finally getting a job with, with Norman Osborn. And he's just like a character just stuck. They need a major status quo change. And allowing him to get married and grow up, because you do have a teenage character in Miles Morales that they would like to become Spider-Man, but they have Peter Parker stuck in a rest of development. Not only would it help that character in you know, the ability for Amazing Spider-Man to do something different with the character, but it would probably open up avenues for Miles Morales to get over. 
Absolutely. It would make Miles less of the other knockoff, you know, dollar store Spider-Man. If he's the one that's going through the trials and tribulations of adolescence and early adulthood, when Peter got married, he basically got to echo the struggles of a lot of newlyweds and taking away that marriage, taking away, bringing him back to the Peter Parker swinging bachelor. All it does is bring him back to a early 20s, late teens, arrested development that he was kind of a little stuck in before it wasn't until he got married that he really started advancing again that's why in the 100 to 2 something range there was a lot of great comics and a lot of great stories and a lot of classic things that are keys now and when you get into the 200s it's a very stagnant book um and it doesn't get unstagnant again until you get up into the 300s and up through you know issue like 400 450 that he's really kind of growing if you think that spider-man being married ages the character you can look at how successful he was and how popular he was even when he was married he was selling hundreds of thousands of copies every month mostly to young people or young adults that are also going through it, you know, teenagers that are struggling to figure out how to make their relationships work. So I, I don't understand why this is such a fucking problem. That was probably the the most creative time and the most advancing time for Peter as a character. And of course, the other love interest out there that people do like, I would say MJ is overwhelmingly the most popular, the one that people would like him to be with. But is a black cat. But even in that, you had Zeb Wells go out there and make black cat a lesbian. So now he can't even be with her. The Parker luck thing is so played out at this point. You can't just see a guy be a mopey, whiny bitch for the rest of his life. Look, it's one thing to have bad luck and be constantly getting reset back to zero when you're a teenager. That happens when you're in your early, maybe even your mid 20s. That kind of stuff happens. Peter's in his 30s now. He got his powers at 15. The Marvel Universe, the 616 and their sliding timeline is about 16, 17 years right now. So he's probably 32, 31. When you're still getting evicted and couch surfing with friends and all that other mopey, sad sack bullshit, when you're in your 30s, you're no longer relatable. You're now just pathetic. So the Parker Luck thing only works when he's younger. And unless you're going to de-age Peter or actually just de-age the Marvel Universe, it's not going to work. The Parker Luck thing, I get it that it was kind of core to the character for a lot of their years. Now it's just making him a pathetic loser. I have some more bad news for Peter Parker's Spider-Man fans. We've been told that Joe Kelly is returning, but we have an update. Marvel Comics' upcoming 10-part saga, Eight Deaths of Spider-Man by Joe Kelly and Ed McGinnis, Begins November 13th in Amazing Spider-Man 61. Fans with a keen eye will notice Joe Kelly isn't credited with writing Amazing Spider-Man 63 or 64 in December. Justina Ireland, who's never written a hit comic in her life, is the sole credited writer. So we're getting bait and switched off of Joe Kelly to Justina Ireland writing these stories solo. And I don't think this was even a Joe Kelly idea. I think they just brought him in there because they knew if they put Justina Ireland on the book, no one would buy it. This is some bullshit. Whenever they announce Joe Kelly and Edmund, you know, Joe Kelly for writing it, I'm like, okay, I'm I'm good with this. Soon as I saw Joe Kelly, Ed McGinnis, I was like, okay, I can kind of understand, but it's not really separating as much from the Zeb Wells run as I'd like. And then I saw Justina Ireland on there. I'm like, oh, so this is nothing more than a way to bait us into buying this event so that you can give justina ireland let her ride off the coattails of a writer that anyone actually cares to read and it looks like that's coming true i had a feeling that that was what was going to happen at least whenever they were doing that beyond era and they tried saddling us with a bunch of other clown writers like cody ziggler and kelly thompson, kelly thompson 
and there was one other weirdo plus Zeb Wells, or like they the same thing that they did during the uh, pre Age of X Men Uncanny X Men run that X Men disassembled, where it was Matthew Rosenberg and then a bunch of nobodies, including like Cenan McGuire. You had a bunch of hacks that were attached with a kind of name. That's before Matthew Rosenberg was a complete joke. They tried piggybacking a bunch of these clowns on there during the Beyond era, during the X-Men Disassembled era. And it was very clear as soon as they added Justina Ireland's name to this Eight Deaths of Spider-Man that she was getting to coat ride tail Joe Kelly so that she can turn around and be like, well, I sold a bunch of comic books. You should continue to give me money. And so that the editor can justify making her the new writer. Because we gar- I guarantee goddamn you, after Joe Kelly is officially done with this 10 issues, fuck it, Justina Ireland's your new ASM writer. Get out now. How far will Marvel Comics have fallen to put somebody that's never sold an actual comic book onto the fucking flagship? If you think it can't get worse, you merely lack sufficient imagination. That's the way that I have come to realize the comic book industry is. Life finds a way, and Marvel finds a way to fail harder. Justina Ireland, as the ASM writer, would be the dumbest decision in the history of comic books. We all thought that Dan Slott's run had reached basically bare minimum Spider-Man. Everyone that would ever drop the title did it during Slott's run. And then Zeb Wells happened, and it actually did get worse. I'm pretty sure that this is an editorial betting pool how shitty of a writer can we stick on our flagship titles this is the reason why uncanny x-men has gail simone this is going to be worse than zeb wells zeb wells was the most no name no talent writer to ever get onto asm in my memory zeb wells was the bottom of the barrel they are now scraping the bottom and even more embarrassing the framework and the story that they're telling in eight deaths of spider-man is basically the story that Tinny Howard just told in the nine lives of Catwoman. It is almost virtually the exact same story. First of all, the idea behind this story is asinine. Spider-Man, a character that has very, very little to do with any sort of mysticism, has never shown any aptitude for magic, is going to become the herald of dr doom sorcerer supreme and he's suddenly gonna have magic powers so what you're telling me is you're not a fan of the sorcerer not quite supreme spider-man no it is the dumbest shit i've heard in a long time and the fact that you're just giving him eight lives why does why does he need eight lives because spiders have eight legs catwoman getting nine lives is just a play on the stupid cats have nine lives thing like, why not just make him an actual spider? They've done this. Man spider or the, the the spider man where he had a bunch of extra arms and shit like that. They could have gone back to that and it would have been less stupid and cringy than this. It does appear that ASM sales are starting to tank. And I think that they are going to go even lower. I can't believe that fucking Zeb Wells is, is still on that book right now. Neither can Zeb Wells. He was actually supposed to leave, but they didn't have anyone ready and they asked him to stay on for another few months. Honestly, it's probably because Joe Kelly is trying to figure out a way to make Justina Ireland's first draft versions of her final submissions for whatever her script is, make them actually comprehensible. Because I have no expectation that this broad has any ability to write. Well, if you go read Blood Hunt Spider-Man, your expectations will lower. And I'm pretty sure just walking into, I don't know, a Starbucks and playing spin the bottle would be a better way to find writers for Amazing Spider-Man than whatever the fuck they're doing these days. You got a point there, Doc. I do want to say if you enjoyed this conversation, we will get it unedited on Think Critical Patreon. It's available right now. There's a link in the video description. Not only will you get that on the Doc Unfiltered Patreon podcast, but you'll also get our Namor Namor, number three review from Jason Aaron, which will be up on YouTube tomorrow, but heavily edited.